Hello and welcome to Pillars of Eternity. If yours truly, Lord is injured the mad. I love the first is Harbinger, the Spiffening, level 24, Boxes Madman, Good Spike in 2013, and all around neutral guy. It's been a while since I last recorded anything. Uh, let's go for a new game, I think on normal. Uh, uh, okay, this seems really interesting, but on the other hand, let's just go in casually for now. So I guess casually is a bit overstated, it's still going to be an obsidian RPG and I'm not very good at act actually playing video games, so there's that, plus I'm really rusty. Five wagons grope blindly for the path on a starless night, their master glancing ever upward to the skies for assurance that he is on the right course. A dim lantern, his only protection against the encroaching darkness. But the skies bring no comfort, shining no light, betraying no hint of what they know. The caravan carries travelers bound for the frontier hamlet of Gilded Vale, you among them, where a local lord has offered land and wealth to settlers from abroad looking for a fresh start. You have taken suddenly ill, sweating and shivering, and one of the other travelers signals for the caravan master to stop on your behalf. He pulls up just in time to avoid plowing into the trunk of a fallen tree that bars the way ahead. You will go no further tonight. Oh no! I have suspicion that the reason why I can't get anywhere is the whole loading screen time. It takes a while. It does. Well, okay. So, male character. That's okay. Cool. Uh. What are these different races? Humans, commonly called folk, are the most common race in the entire route, the Aegean Empire, Old Balia, and the Balian Republics. Though not as large as the towering Gaumura, humans are known for their strength and willpower. Okay, cool. The mighty Gaumura are the largest of the gift races and are commonly found in or near oceans. Though not truly aquatic, they have an affinity for water and many of the civilizations, such as Raudai, are based on naval dominance. They are known for their unparalleled strength. And for looking kinda like a kitty, but not quite like a kitty. By virtue of land covered and number of colonies settled, dwarves are the most well traveled race in the world. They are commonly found in the Darwood, the Valian Republic, and almost any colonized land. Dwarves are known for their great strength and tenacity. But they get a minus to dexterity. And dexterity is important. Why is this elf so blue green? Elves are the dominant race in Air Clan Fef and the white that wins and are common and are extremely common in the dire root and Aedia. Elves are known for the speed and intelligence as well as a commonly isolationist nature. Then we have Orlans. We have little bat ears. Ah, Orlans are the smallest of the gift races, though many cultures don't consider them to be civilized at all. Also notable for their large ears, due to skin, and her suit bodies. Orlans are commonly found in Air Tanwerf, the Examital Plains, and parts of Tyro. They are known for their mental intensity and quickness. Intense. The godlike are children of the Gif, who have been blessed with physical aspects associated with the gods, though some do not consider it a blessing. These aspects may take many forms and often come with mystical powers. Aberrant head shapes are typical, and godlike are unable to wear protective headgear as it is near impossible to find anything that fits. Because of their unusual nature and their inability to reproduce, godlike are often viewed with fear and wonder. I kinda want to have my head on fire, but on the other hand I don't. I really don't even know what race I'm, you know, class I want to play. Uh, so Bail Elf is an option here. It is unclear exactly how long ago the Bail Elves Clan Fallen came for the southern po came to the southern polar regions of the world, but they have lived there for at least 1200, no, 12,000 years, not 1200. Oh. Yes, based on their continuous contact with Aumalua, our greatest, 
They appear to be among the most stationary ethnic groups in the known world, migrating within the polar region but seldom venturing far north. They are rare in all northern lands and most people consider them exotic, if they have been seen at all. Ooh, elemental endurance. And then the more common looking wood elves, who don't look greenish blue. Wood elves, sclerot for folk. Traced their beginnings far north of present day Asia and have migrated south through the forest. Forests of the continent, even. Now, covering in all way south across the equator, they are also believed to have migrated across the sea to Aea Clan Fath. While physiologically identical to one another, Wood Elves from Asia are culturally different from those in Aea Clan Fath and consider themselves wholly different groups. Ooh. Uh, that's. Distant advantage. I'm kind of curious now what the. Like, there's a death guard like. Um. Alright, that looks fucking creepy. When death guard like attack an enemy with 55% or less endurance, their damage is increased. Death guard like are the most distrusted of their kind. Strange growths cover their eyes, or in some cases, a dire face, giving them a, sinist a sinister appearance. The growths are, trans are transparent for the godlike but opaque from the outside, hiding their features. Death godlike are commonly killed at birth because many cultures consider them to be harbingers of doom. The, the bodies of fire card like often resemble hot metal, burnt wood or stone with harmless flames that erupt from the cracks on the skin. Fire card like are objects of both reverence and fear in the dead fire archipelago. Many locals believe they have the power to awaken volcanoes or that killing one will cause a volcano to awaken. In the tire wood, fire card like are often seen as a sign of the blessing of Magran, goddess of war and fire. When reduced below 50% endurance, fire guard like flow like metal in the forge, gain damage reduction and doing a small amount of fire damage in it to any creature who eats them in melee. To be fair, I still don't intend to play a guard like so. Oh god, that's a nifty horn you have there. You horny bugger. Moon guard like are the most tolerated of the guard like. While the skin tone and the large moon like growth on the foreheads may be strange to some, their appearance are generally considered more relatable by the other kith. Sailors have many beliefs about moon guard like and their propensity to bring luck, though there is little agreement as to what kind of luck they tend to bring. Every encounter when reduced below 75, 50 and 25% endurance moon god like generates waves of healing moon like that restore endurance to them and their allies. Oh god that looks nifty. I'm kind of tempted, just because you know that's kind of really nifty. Grants a bonus to magic transition and dexterity when endurance is below 50%. Nature god like appear to be a fusion of human and animal features, often covered by plants, moss, or fungi. This has led to the belief that they are all very fun guys. And the common stigma that they are diseased and many are killed at birth because of it. Many Twitic orders have been have a keen interest in nature god like because of their general curiosity as to how souls occupy animals, plants, and stones. Um I guess still wanna go with an elf. But on the other hand, no, let's do this. Just because, you know. Uh, oh, right. We get to choose the body type, so we can still be an elf. The Orlan ears. You don't get the Orlan ears when you go for an Orlan one, though. Which is kinda odd. Alright. Uh, can we skip on to class now, or does it all work from over here? Yes, it does. Okay, so we have fighters, barbarians, chanters, ciphers, druids, which seem like the most, uh, you know, sensible option. That aura ranger, as far as, you know... In nature, God like is concerned. Monks, wizards, fighters, rogues, druids, cyclops, rangers. Ah, I was hoping for like 
that everyone had like their own unique ability well not ability and outfit animists at heart druids tap into the spiritual power that flows through the simple living things of Eora, plants animals and sometimes even living stone while not necessarily necessarily religious druids do have a reverence for the natural world and a keen interest in understanding its mysteries in most cultures druids are understood as a sort of primal magician but among the clan fathans nasik Daki and many rural cultures, they may have high positions of influence and authority. All druids have mastered one animalistic form. These forms give the druids strong melee abilities and grant an additional power while the druid is shifted. Also, my nose was completely clogged up. Druids have access to a variety of offensive and some support oriented spells. Every two levels, druids automatically gain access to an, initi uh, to an additional set of spells. Initially, their uh, spells can be cast a limited number of times per rest, as streets gain power to weaker spells eventually shift to burn and counter use. That's really cool. I'm gonna like how D&D ish it is. Barbarian, though, how will that work? When barbarians hit with melee attacks, they automatically make reduced damage attacks at all other enemies within a short distance of the target. Hmm. Uh, that kind of seems nifty as well. What else would I want to play there? Yes. What's a cipher? A recent discovery in the Eastern Reach, ciphers were once called Briskalvin, Mind Hunters. By the Grand Fathans, ciphers have the ability to directly contact and manipulate another person's soul and psyche using an allies or enemy's essence as the focus for the magic. The most ciphers are still found in the Eastern Reach, but the traditioners of the techniques have spread throughout the known world. They are gaining acceptance over time, but are generally distrusted, especially by the uneducated. Ciphers can directly target allies and enemies with powerful soul focused effects. These powers cost focus which ciphers build through the use of the soul build. Okay. It gets a cool outfit though, so. Uh, I think I'm gonna go with a, a druid still. Yeah. Though a barbarian sounds like a lot of fun. Barbarians always sound like a lot of fun. Uh, in all fairness, yeah, true it is. Ooh, what can we choose? We can have a bear, a bull, a cat, a stag, and a wolf. Hmm, I'm gonna say things the stag has uh, access to carnage Ooh. that's actually really good the wolf spirit shift moves quickly and has an attack that can knock enemies pro no 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 I think a stag actually sounds like the best idea here especially considering the you know nifty horns we have we have, will have access to Spirit Shift Stag now, Charm Beast, Dancing Bolts, summons a flurry of thin bolts of lightning, hitting enemies in the area of effective shock damage. Or oh, so, that's nifty. Causes enemies in the area of effective glow with pale green light, making them easier targets. Affected enemies suffer decreased deflection and reflex. Cool. Calls down a shaft of intense sunlight, burning and potentially blinding those caught in the area of effect. And calls an an icy wind of incredible power to rise, pushing back all in the area of effect and inflicting freeze damage. Shoots sharp torn the winds up through the ground, causing piece damage and potentially sickening anyone in the area of effect. Draws an invigorating power of nature, creating a mild regeneration effect and raising max endurance on party members. Ooh. Rapid grows a patch of twisted vines that surround and entangle anyone unlucky enough to get inside. Characters who set foot inside the area of effect become hobbled. Conscious a giant bear operates a sharp talons, causing slash damage to all in the area of effect. 
Like, what are those attached to? Are they just chilling about? Okay, so... The recommended stats here are Might and Intellect. So... No, oh, Resolve is also recommended for a Druid, so... Um, have some. Let's bring that, these down to 11. Maybe this down to 15 so we can just... Mm, yeah. Close enough. It'll do the trick for now. Okay, so... Next. Culture. The Aether Empire is currently the largest and most powerful force in this part of the world. It is centered around the equator and has a tropical climate. Climate. Uh, that's not wrong. That's not right either. Ah. Though the Empire has colonies in numerous areas of the world, Greater Aether is its heart and houses the majority of its human and elven nations. Consisting of the nation of Nazdaq, dozens of Aumia settlements and hundreds of lawless pirate infested islands that stretch out along the southern sea, Deadfire is home to boreal elves, Aumau and a mixed variety of other races. Deadfire Archipelago is the last stop for anyone headed east, a multitude of monster sea creatures in the ocean beyond, making travel virtually impossible. Oh! So there's like different outfits and items depending on where you're from. A large cracked southern expanse of polar ice, the white that wins, is home to pale elves and small colonies of daring explorers, outcasts and adventurers. While virtually no plant life grows in the white, it is home to many hardy species of dangerous animals that forage from the sea or prey upon each other to survive. They get the nifty uh, barbarian outfits, so... Mm. On the other hand, this screenshot is pretty cool as well. The Living Lands is the mountainous region of a large northern island renowned for its diversity of plant and animal life. Its weather is unpredictable and its ecosystems vary, tra vary dramatically from valley to valley. The Living Lands are home to an assortment of races in a variety of colonial in and independent settlements. Dominated by the Aumau nation of Rawabatai. The gulf itself is host to a number of nations, most of them Aumau, Orlan, or Dwarven. Though these countries are relatively young, they are some of the most advanced colonial settlements in the east. The gulf is a land of riches and resources for those who can take them. Though the entire coast is often pummeled by violent storms. What's the crown jewel of the southern seas? Old Valia is now the grumbled remnants of an empire of warring merchant nations. Counting many humans and worms among their ranks, the old Valian countries are still forced to be reckoned still forces to be reckoned with and are proud of their rich cultural heritage. Look at these planes. You could scale armor with that, with the looks of it. But uh, a stick. I think I'm gonna go with old Valia. Sounds like good fun. Uh, let's see. You have lived your life amongst the nobility. Your days have been marked by lavish meals and extravagant parties. Your conversations peppered with talk of pedigree and bloodlines. And that's that's not exactly right for a godlike, especially not a godlike merchant. You were part of a group that found that a fleshing colony in a distant land. Hmm, nope. You never quite fit in, no matter what, where you go. Each new town is just a place to rest briefly before moving on to the next. You're more comfortable on the road, traveling the world. And that kind of makes sense, right? For a godlike druid. Uh, your life has been spent on the study of your craft. You trained and prepared, hoping to hone your skills and apply your trade. You create goods from all over the world, bearing items with buyers of all kinds. You have never known freedom. Shackles and chains have bound your existence, and someone has told you what to do your entire life. No. 
Blade and battle is your way of life. You solve your problems by pulling out your weapon and applying force. You live for the thrill of the chase, whether for glory or for sustenance, you have made your living taking the lives of wild creatures. You made a name for yourself as a troublemaker, disrespect for authority and the lack of care regarding the rules are recurring themes in your life. You've always felt driven to express yourself creatively. The structure and rigid control of other pursuits has never satisfied in the same way. I think a drifter is fine. That or a mercenary. But you know, a drifter makes more sense for a druid, I feel. Um, no, that's... That picture doesn't make the best of sense for that. Your nature, dude, like. Where's the option for a nature, dude, like? Those are lady faces. It looks like there's only one. Uh, picture that is actually meant for a nature good like and I feel that this is going to have to do the job then all right oh we can choose our primary and secondary colors as a true it I feel I don't know this sort of a brownish color but on the other hand you know there are alternatives so these three are the only actual visual difference options we can get all right in that case that mohawk stays Oh, and we get to choose a voice. Hey there. Now I am the leader of the group. Stand together. Keeping quiet. Yeah? I'll lead the way. <clears throat> to whispers and shadows. Right. You can have him I without the voice. Huh. To whispers and shadows. Huh? Follow me. Let's go. That seems fire enough. And the name for our little druidy, our little guy like druidy, it's gonna be Bob. Yes, Bob, level one druid. Actually, no, no, let's not make it Bob. Bobicus. There we go, now that's a proper druidic, druidy name for a god like character. Alright, now what's the controls of the game? The caravan mas master continues addressing the group, his bushy red mustache and sagging chowls quivering, quivering as if for emphasis. Everybody stays close to the wagons, got it? Stay out of the woods, and beasts take you if you were planning a stroll through those ruins up there. He nods toward the looming black mass on the hillside. Whole area's crawling with hut-dwelling types who'd be happy to stick an axe in you for trespassing. So mind that you don't track mud on their sacred blazing rocks. Tonight, everybody stays put, and in the morning, we'll get the path cleared. Gilded veils less than a day out. Understood? At last, the current master turns to you, frowning as he looks you over. Touch of the rumbling rot, could be. There's a stinging beetle around here carries it. You'll be fine once it passes your innards. Unless you don't drink water, of course. Which case, you'll be dead in a day. There's a berry grows in these parts, small and pink. Called a springberry. About the size of a fingernail. Give you cramps if you eat it, but the frontiersmen make a tea from it. Calms the insides. Should get you through the night. You might check around, see if you can find some. Meanwhile, I'll see if we can scare you up some water. I know you want to hunt before it gets much darker. But see about refilling our water first. Got a sick one here. Before that, Odema looks over his shoulder at his assistant, a lanky intense man named Sparkle who carries an old sun-bleached bow. 
He then nods in your direction, Spuffle nods and uh, slides the worm bow over his shoulder. Ah, okay, so that was two of them, two uh, Sparfle men. Okay, so... Uh, where would I find these berries? They grow on a bush that's common around here, kind of funny looking. You'll know it when you see it. Doubt you'd have to go far off the road to find one. And what are those ruins? Nothing you won't see on half the hills of Air Glonfoth. Money to be made selling their knickknacks in Defiance Bay, if you don't mind getting stuck with Glonfoth and arrows now and again. They didn't build them, but I'll be the effigy if they don't watch them like a mother bear. Of course, all the ones around here have been ransacked ten times over. Got nothing left worth half a pawn, so I hear. Who did build the ruins? Ah. Okay, I'll keep that in mind. I'll just close this message. Who did build the ruins? Got different names for them. Settlers called them Ingwithans. Nobody that liked them enough to stop them becoming ruins tell you that much. Yeah, it's dangerous out here. Not if you hurry about your business. And not if the weather holds up. There is concern in his tone, but he does not elaborate. What kind of weather do they get out here? This time of year? Rain, mostly. And wind. But there's a different kind of wind out here, time to time. Locals call it a beowick. Born out of the ether. The spirit's path. Never seen it myself. Never care to. But those huge rocks coming out for, coming up out of the ground. Yeah. They don't got Audra where you come from? Well, it just grows up out of the ground like this. Goes deep like tree roots. Some of it all the way to the heart of the world, you believe the stories. It's more like a shell than a proper rock. Easier to work if you're a mason. Got all kinds of strange properties. Seems to have some kind of life of its own. Dies if it gets dug up. Loses its luster. Folks think it probably grew at one point or another, but not these days. The soul butchers in Defiance Bay use it for different things. I've heard tell it can hold a man's soul, but I don't care to see it. Got enough to worry about without seeing something like that. I'll go see about those berries then. Hold on. Take someone with you. I know you're not some helpless tenderfoot, not like most of this lot. But you drop dead, I don't want to be looking for the body. Got a schedule to keep. He scans over the travelers, resting his eyes at length, on, at length on a sturdy armor-clad woman who has spent the journey's nights sleeping on uneven ground with blank, without blanket or pillow. Kalisha. Kalisha! The woman looks up on her own time. He needs to find some spring berries. Watch that he doesn't drop dead. No promises. What kind of guide says something like that? Kind you can afford. Don't listen to her, you're in good hands. And I pay too well, if anything. So apparently Odema chuckled and shaked his head before looking at me again. <laughs> and aimed at her that she pays too well. That he pays. Even. Off with you. Hayden should have supplies. See that you're equipped before you head out. We're in harsh country. Get your berries and hurry back. And if you get so much as a tickle of wind, you drop everything and you run. Something in the air tonight. If it's a beowick, we'll shelter in the ruins. Hut dwellers be damned. You heard the man. Let's get going before you mm -hmm. keel over. Oh, so it's a mousy game. All right. Uh, maybe I should have read the first one as well. Okay, I didn't even read that one. Or that one! Or that one! Who needs tutorials? Oh god. Who is this? A caravan. Uh, can I stretch this a little? Yes, I can. I'm gonna sneeze now. <laughs> yeah. Alright. Most people you encounter in the world are neutral or friendly. There appears to be a lot of people here. Most of whom do not have a unique name. So I'm not gonna spend my time on them. For now. Hello? Yeah, okay. Anyone need supplies? I've got sundries for sale. 
You may have Sundress for sale, but I have no idea if I actually have anything. I have a giant miniature space piglet. And the common splash. What does that do? How do you use it? This item grants the ability to shield the mirror from the myriad pearls that plague the world of Eora. An aspect of the god of Eothas, Cohen represents the harvest of old age, symbolized here by the many interlocking sickles that form the ring. As Cohen helps protect the dignity of old age, so too do his followers pledge to prevent young lives from being harvested before that time. Alright. Ha, ah, I can make you wear pink pants. Take that. Oh, and while you're at it, you know. There we go. How do I use this? This ti tiny titanic pig has an otherworldly appearance that seems to be at all with its endearing behavior. It follows you to the full end request, nothing in return, save the tenship. But it's a giant miniature space piglet. Alright, alright. Um, let me. I'm gonna equip it. Look at it, it's adorable! You see a man wearing simple but mostly neat clothes. He's transfixed, however, by a ragged tear in the seam of his tunic. Brought a whole wagon full of goods to sell, but not enough shirts for the road. He shakes his head and laughs when he notices you. He scratches one cheek with his knuckles, it's covered with uneven stubble, as if he hasn't quite gotten used to shaving on the road. Say, is there anything you need? I've got some basic traveling supplies for sale, if you'd like to take a look. Who are you? I'm a trader, originally from the Adir Empire, but I've been trying to establish new business out here. Life on the road has brought some unexpected challenges, to be sure. And I'm sure you've noticed how prickly the locals can be. But we're here to make the most of things, right? We might as well try. My thoughts exactly. Why isn't this line moist? Something else you need? Looks like we're settled for the night. Let's see what you've got. Because I have no idea what I've got. Do I have anything? I've got 100 gold pieces. Or coppery pieces, even. Ooh, I could go with a smaller weapon, maybe. Or I could try and, uh, you know, uh, collect some muni. I'm not gonna sell the Gaunt's Pledge because I have no idea what that is. That looks expensive. Something else you need? It's not as big as it used to be, but it's still big. The mainland is a continent northwest of here, but the colonies used to include Rayad Ceres and the Deerwood. About 150 years ago, Deerwood won its independence from the Empire. A fact our companions are quick to remind me of. He gives you a lopsided grin and nods at the other scattered caravans. Why'd you move all the way out here? Because it seemed friendlier than Raid Ceres? <laughs> My brothers took over the family mercantile business a few years ago, and there wasn't enough for me to do back home. I moved out to try and expand. Darwood is a former Adar colony, so it seemed like a good place to start, and as much as I admire the Red Serens' work ethic, they've always struck me as a little fanatical. Sounds reasonable enough. Out here, I'm just taking it one day at a time. How do I go? Because this apparently... Uh, is somewhere I need to go? No idea where, but you know, there's a direction. This probably is a dead. Can we go that way? We can. It looks like this is where horses are kept. Never mind. I found some Orland's cradle. I don't know what it's used for. Can we collect all of this giant rock? No problem not. I want to collect the entire thing. Fast mode is active. I assume it's something that is not active once we're actually in any sort of combat situation. I'll have your water soon enough. Stream's not going anywhere. Oh, thank you. 
But what if the wind takes the stream away? Or what if the, you know, streamer's internet uh, speed drops and just gone forever? We shouldn't stray too far. This path winds through a narrow canyon back the way you came. Grooves in the road mark the passage of hundreds of caravans. Let's check by those outcroppings. Oh, hello. Ooh. Okay, so what? Where's our spell list even? How do I do this? Character, journal, options, stronghold. You get a stronghold? Inventory character, select all, cancel, attack, formation. What do we have for me? It looks like a singular wolf. What do we have that is good against a single target? I'm just gonna cast it over there. While you... I don't know, you can talk to yourself. You attack this target. Capish? Okay, how do I unpause? Uh. Space? Sometimes a weapon or spell simply isn't well suited to penetrating an enemy's uh, damage reduction. While the attack hits, the DR will wipe you out all but a small percentage of the incoming damage. Alright. Well. One of your characters has been engaged in melee. Okay, cool. You know, this character may as well engage in melee now. But you're still in melee, right? Yeah. What you need? A piglet! Piglet, how do I command you? Ooh, some move heights. Nice. Mm. Oh, that's that's this good berries. You're kind of a mystery to the rest of the caravan. Just some kind of wanderer, the way I hear it. Ooh. You have to be when people are looking for you. Yeah, how is it that you happen to come here? I don't know why they're looking for him, and I don't care to find out. Well, we all got things we'd like to leave behind. Gods know I do. I'll tell you that. He's hoping they never track us down. Galicia breeds in her surroundings. Been a long time since I've been this way, but I always did like it. Uh, Lord Raedric's offer makes a girl think I'll give him that. But you here to settle like the rest of the lot? I hadn't given it much thought. No harm in that, might as well see the place first. So you must have some other plan in mind for coming this way. Yeah. Probably the same things I did before. Just the scenery will be new then. Sometimes that's all that's needed. Anyway, I'm wasting time here. They might give, uh, they might give me an earful. Let's be on our way. So, why are you here? My sister moved out here sometimes back. She sent me a letter, she seemed worried, but that's how, how she always is. This time though, she asked me to come out, and that's got me a little worried. I haven't seen her in ages, been doing guide work in Examital, but I'd do anything for her. She's, well, she's a much better woman than me, so I'm here and we'll see. Tell me about yourself. I've got simple needs. I like open skies and far horizons, I find work that lets me live that way. My family around us too, we started in Tarwood. But my parents ended up in the Living Lands. I've got a brother in Raotai and another in Avia. My sister in Gilded Vale. And she's the only real homebody. Is it Durwood? Like, not dire. Yeah, probably. What can you tell me about Durwood? I'm not much for history, but from what I know, it used to be part of the Avia Empire. Broke off after a war some years back. The locals here are feisty, and that's how they like it. Alright, let's get back to back camp. You know, I wouldn't hold my breath that Spatfell Sparfell's getting you water anytime soon. He does what he likes when he feels like it. We should check up on him first, slap him around a little. Stream's just down that way, come on, let's get you your water. 
Well, the positive thing is we have a space pick. Um, you know. What you need? Mm hmm. This is how things work, right? Oh, that looks like the stream. Can we zoom out enough for me to find if we missed anything that I really want to see? Or looks like I know. Can we cross this? No. But there's a bridge over here which we probably can. <gasps> Did you see that? Oh. Doris, maybe or looters or bandits. Bad sign, anyway, you figure it. The corpse is cold to the touch and the ripe smell of astral its putrid raves. Dark crystal blood stink with smudges its simple line and clothing. What does this say? A lockpick and some leather armor. Ooh, I'll take that. You see, it's uh, apparently better than what I was currently wearing. Hmm. Maybe you could go with something greenish. On the hand. This is fine as well. Mate. Nothing else down here? Alright, cool, cool. What are those nests? Those hives that hang on those trees? What a surprise. Alright. I should go back. How does the trees emerge as powerful one of the guides, barely discernible in the demon moonlight? He's n he no longer carries his bow and there is strangest strangeness to his gait, his stride wobbly as he moves toward you with labored breath. Sparful, are you alright? Sparful's toe catches on a rock and he collapses forward in a heap, the feathered shaft of an arrow planted between his shoulders like an enemy flag. Oh no. Can we lose him now? Ah, well, that's an end to a moment's respite, I guess. Alright, so, what can we do? How large is this? You know what? I think, I think that'll do just what I need. Alright, what do you want to do? Well, of course, you're still going to stick with the axe. Okay, I'm going to mm. let them come a little closer. And then I will choose... I want to do that. <laughs> How do I do that? Do I simply not do that? I'm gonna... Give her some regen, maybe? <laughs> oh, is that what the stack form looks like? That's kinda, um... That's kind of really badass. Let's go. Okay, I should give her an order as well. What you need? Because he's not doing very well. Okay, um. Mm. There we go. Doesn't help. Come on, we have to get back to camp. Hide armor and a hunting bow. Nifty. Right. No, we can't loot him anymore. Seven little pieces of copper there. So that's nice. Ah, what else do we have? Mushrooms. Tur cat. A dire. How did I? The footprints around the campfire are indistinct and may have been here for days or longer. Alright, now. Let's take our biggie. Yeah, uh, and our companion. What you need? And that's good. Sure. Oh, 
Oh, looky over here. About that, let's get back over here. Now, return to that stage. And it's time for carnage. You, you just fight, I think. Is he doing the carnage thing? Also, can I? No, I can't cast anything right now. Right, because it's still a matter of resting right now, not the encounter. What you need? Okay, you rush him. Fuck it. You do the same. You may even knock him down. If you would so desire. Yeah, like that. Nice, except he died. Oh, that's two hatchets? Those... Hmm. Not entirely sure they'll be handy to me, but, you know. I'll take them. My dear. How are your items doing? What's your armor? You have scale armor. That's pretty nice, decent, I guess. I suppose. Apparently you're the one carrying the wolf hide. Huh. So you got a torch and a battle axe. Alright. You also have a second set available to you, so... If you want, they could give you dual access, but you don't want that because that's actually mm -hmm. not very good. What you need? Okay. Sure. Let's, let's get everything. Oh well. So much about selling the loot. All around you lie the massacred remains of the other travelers, but with their arrows and knife hilts, blade and bug-eyed and filthy. Galicia puts the back of her left hand to her mouth as if to warn away some poisonous vapor. A handful of dark figures stands above the fallen, dreading on limbs and backs and hands, jerking their axes from bodies as if from half-split logs. One of them, towering and severe with a thick beard tested with knots, holds a wet blade at the neck of a, the man you recognize as Hilden, the last of your caravan left standing. Lay down your arms, trespasser, to not forfeit this man's life for a fight you will lose. The ruin has not been solid by our hands, men of Air Clan Path. You were with Skyrim, no way to know. I have seen the truth with my own eyes. Blood must be paid for this intrusion. So I say again, lay down your arms. Okay, so... Judging by the string of animal teeth around your neck, I'm guessing you are worshippers of Calavin. If Calavin told me told you to stop protecting the runes, would you? The man frowns and motions as if to swing his axe, hit and winces, but the blow never comes. Instead, the man knock, cocks his head in treat. Of course, but he would not. Is it by the command of all the gods that we accept this charge? How do you know? Because it's consistent with your beliefs or because it's what you were told? It has always been known to my people. I see, and what of Galavin's edict that weakness and age must be purged by youth and strength? You think Galavin... Galavain will do, want some moldy grumbling stones to survive long after the builders have turned to dust? He would not. He told us otherwise. I'm sure he did, just not you personally, but why should that stop you from killing innocents? Distracted, uh, the man's grip falters on his axe handle and he nearly fumbles it, affording Hilden the moment he needs to dodge out of his swing, which comes too late. Howling with rage, the man charges you instead. Okay, cool. We got another player! It's the traitor! The traitor's not dead! But wait, there was a corpse here, wasn't there? Oh yeah, th there is a corpse here, but apparently that's not the traitor. Let's talk to him! <laughs> yeah, we're not gonna talk to him right now. Yeah, that's, that's, that's a silly idea. Okay, looks like you're facing the bugger. Head on. It looks like she's coming in to help you. And it looks like... Bobicus is gonna turn into the giant stag. And then 
Come in and help you. Look at him helping. He's totes helping. Get over here. Help. Okay, is one of them down? Yeah, one of them's down. And uh, this guy's almost down, so. Um, no, 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 disengage. Okay, um, I need you to rush that bugger. Stomp him down. And you to, you know, do that part where you mm? kill the bugger. While you. Hmm? You continue running. There we go. Tactics. Mm. Your enemy lies, supine in the ground, unable to rise. His companions now silent among the other dead. His breath comes in wheezing, wistful, ga fitful gasps. He looks not at you, but at the sky above you. Forgive us. Barely audible beneath uh, his choked sighs, a whisper of uh, wind stirs the air. At this, the man's eyes roll back as he closes them. Good, good. The gods are just. A queer smile crosses his face. I am ready. The wind begins to swell, whipping around the camp, electric and volatile, upending pots and rattling tents like an angry spirit. You can feel it begin to seep beneath your skin and where it pierces you, it feels as though it is rending you apart from within. Seated against the wagon wheel, it winds the howling uh, maelstorm slashed across chest and power of them body stairs and with great effort he raises his sagging head. His eyes barely open, he looks directly Get at you. Inside. Run! Well, thank you. Wait, but loot! Well, he is hoping the wind doesn't take the loot away. Okay. Straining against the gale that threatens to pull you off your feet with every step, you set your hands in the worn folds of weathered rock and set about pulling yourself up the precipice. Both. With a last burst of energy before your arms give out, you swing yourself up onto the ledge. Heard on trails behind, slowed by injury and delayed by early hesitation. As he nears the face of the rocks, one of the fallen attackers who had been feigning death lunges for Hayden and topples him into the rocky, onto the rocky ground. Restrained, Hyodan lashes out against his fatigued assailant but struggles to break his hold. They are close to you. Despite he, the wind from your position, if you were to throw your weapon at the attacker, you would have a good chance of hitting your mark. I'm gonna do that. Your aim is true and uh, hit jars Hyodan loose. Lurching to his feet, Hyodan clambers up the base of the rocks as he needs to up however. The wind flares, pulling him sideways and tearing one of his hands free. But having got uh, onto the hard rock, you manage to catch hold of it. Securing his other hand, you pull with feigning strength and it feels as, feels as though your arms will be choked from the sockets. They hold just long enough for Hidden to set his feet and join you on the trembling ledge. There is deep resonance to the swelling wind now. You feel it in the rocks beneath your feet and inside the cavity of your own chest as though it will shake the marrow from your bones. Each new, each new gust menaces the old stones before you. Loosening connections, unsettling balances as you dart beneath the old archway, the entire portal begins to fall beneath its own weight. Was that? A Buick. Had to be. Then we're lucky to be alive. And we're the only ones. We can't stay here. There could be another collapse. We're not getting out that way anyway. Let's get further inside. Alright, how do we camp? You have no camping supplies. Uh. We can't camp. Okay. Alright, in that case, we are exploring the ruins. That Space should be peak. far enough. <sighs> but what now? We look for another way out. Storm has to die sometime. What happened out there? Windstorm. Of a kind they only get in air clan faff. Not too many people live through them, so it's hard to know what's true. The clan faff and believe were this firewack. To them, it's the gods' way of reaping the souls of the land that couldn't find their way own way out. But they take a living soul as soon as a dead one. Still got yours? I think so. Who attacked us? Clan faff and stones should be the hut well as them I warned you about. Look to be fangs of Galavain, who are the twitchiest of the lot. 
They go ruin to ruin looking for fights with colonists. Poor Edema. I think he half expected this once we lost the main road. The Clan Fafans said we'd just passed into ruins. I don't believe that, Odema would never allow it, but as much as the fangs are hotheads, Clan Fafans don't attack without being provoked. Either they saw something and got the wrong idea, or... Oh, there's looters in here with us, that's not something we need right now. What about everyone else in our caravan? Galicia's lips press together and her chin rumples, her face, voice is faint. The wheels got ho the hold of them, the wheels got hold of them now. God, God's grant them better luck in their next lives. You don't seem too upset about all this. Maybe you just don't know me enough and to know what upset looks like. And maybe I've seen worse too, seen worse and kept on walking because there's nothing else to be done. Of course there's other people you care about who still need you. Alright, let's get going. Hmm. So, I suppose I don't need to use every option of talking. It's trembling, sickly creature emerges from the dark, clutching the spear, knobby elbows, and uh, uh, thin ribs show through its scaly flesh, but you recognize it as a Xaurib. It watches you cautiously, breathing its ragged sighs. It's okay, I won't hurt you. The Xaurib recalls fingers still wrapped tightly around its spear. The creature cocks its head and approaches you, a soft clicking sound emanating from the back of its throat. The creature sniffs around you and finds nothing of interest. It steps back and it re resumes its defensive posture. Alright, slowly back away. So we can't go that way right now, unless we want to fight the little thingy. Oh look! Look at the tiles! What are those symbols? I suspect it's a mystery to everyone. Ooh, corpse. With some more armor. And a relief gem. Torch and a tattered journal. This small folio is torn in several places and blood has soaked into several of the sheets. One latter entry is still legible, however. I can't believe my luck. A few rounds of dice and I've got my hands on a genuine and with an artifact. The fellow who had it said it was pretty it was a pretty enough thing as far as he's concerned. He's not willing to go digging in some ruins. But if he's right about this gem leading to a hidden treasure, that's that's worth sneaking past a few painted elves. I had to silently listen in the morning, then it's just a matter of finding this relief he was talking about. Alright, uh, I'll do all that. Assuming I can still carry all of that. Um, fact is, probably no. Alright, what do you have? You already have leather armor. I'm gonna give you some hide armor, because you're probably not gonna trade with me anyway right now, so... Might as well just hand you some things. Also, I for completely forgot about the fact that they handed away all of my weapons. So here's some new ones. For me. Uh, Alright, what else? I'm gonna have you carry that as well. And you get to carry... Uh, ranged weapons. That's cool with you, right? And you're also carrying a torch. That's cool. That's cool. You know what? Maybe instead of a second axe, we could also use. Do you really have access to. Yeah, okay, right. I didn't disable that option. Wait. Do you hear that? Um, no. Is it a little biggie again? No, it's a. Big, 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 biggie. Ooh. Fascinating. No. In that case... Oh! Apparently you're well rested that you can go back to doing that sort of thing. Amazing. I'm not. But you know... I can still stag. And stagging is half the battle. Neat. Hmm. Sure. Right. I'll take it. And another hatchet. That looks weak. Could be a shortcut. Uh, push the wall. I'm gonna try. Okay. Leave. For now. Except, you know. 
Yay! Galicia actually has the mic to open this stone wall. Huh? Except, you know, there's still so many things to explore. But I'm quite certain that this here is something we cannot open. Quite yet. Those symbols. Just like the tiles. Apparently this room then holds the secret. Somewhere, I can't quite see where. that thingy. Um, I'm not quite sure I'm doing the wisest thing here. No, no, I'm most certainly not. Those are oozes. And only one of us has a fire weapon. Oh, and those are ranged attacks. Eating. Almost dead. Do you have that ability to? What you need? Okay. Uh. Apparently, it's still alive. Uh. Who's plasma? It has some value. Sure. Okay, how do I heal myself now? Oh, that's another ball axe. Hmm. I accidentally threw away my last one. So it was less by accident, but more by... Holy shit, I need to save your life, dude. What's that muck on the wall? Vicious and oily, the muck links to anything it touches. A vicious slick of something dark and dull like runs down this wall. The shapes and bulges in the ooze suggest that something lies beneath it, but you can't tell what. Use your water skin to clear off the ooze. Rinse the ooze away, revealing an intricate relief of a man's face. The sun bursts around it has chipped away in places, but the details of his head, from the dark curves of his hair to the ridges of his pointed ears, still showcase remarkable craftsmanship. One eye socket is empty, a gem fills the other. The chamber begins to rumble, stray rocks dancing across the tile floor, finally a large section of the wall gives away. Mind you, by the way, we're gonna die. Because, you know, there's the whole fact about uh, me needing water not to die, and me not having any water, so yeah. Just ganked it, you know, everyone on that shit. Yeah. Fine. Take the tools. Yeah. Then we're gonna look inside here. Ooh. Minor cloak of protection, an amethyst and an Adra. Sure. Hmm. And that's the extent of the secret chamber, is it? Alright, cool. Uh. Who wants a cloak? Who wants a cloak? I'm gonna have a cloak. Yeah. Because I'm a hero now. Should I equip the ring as well? Because I have no idea what it actually does. Well, I've done it. I've equipped the ring. I'm holding all the magical artifacts. I am a terrible companion to you lot. But you know what? I don't really mind. Okay, right, so the secret to going past that was supposed to be over there somewhere, right? Wait, uh, have we got an, any experience? No one the old healthy things. I should probably look into that. Hmm. Still level 1, right? Personal. Yeah, first level crew weed. Then we have a first level fighter and a first level rogue. I thought you were a valid merchant, not a rogue. Who's here? See if they left anything useful behind. Okay. Hammer and chisel, camping supplies, and a mace. 
Ooh. Camping supplies might be quite handy. But we have a piggy. That's the most important thing. The pig. Let's be fair, I don't want to rest until we have another level. Or until I'm actually, you know, really, really, really fucking close to dying. Alright, so... Where exactly are the symbols that are supposed to guide me through here? Um, no idea. Okay, let's go and look at that shortcut that we unlocked. By the might of... Uh, what's her name? By the might of Kalisa. I could scout ahead. Well, you could scout ahead, but, you know. Scout ahead. Why do that when we can just accidentally barge in and just fall it there? You two can stabby stabby. What's around the corner? These guys died really fast. I don't know. I think they were meant to teach like stealth mechanics or something. Fresh air in here. I think we found an exit. Sounds like the storm path too. Hmm. If this is the exit, we need to figure out how to get to that loot. Delisha, I'm sorry, but you have the most health right now, so I'm tempted to just send you ahead. How can I help? Okay, here then you go over there. Ah. All right. Can you light it? Um. Just so we're safe. Mm. Could you get the fuck over here? Mm hmm. Wait a minute. Oh no, it's still burning. Good, good, good. I still can't make out the sigils that we're supposed to look at. Oh. Is that how it is? Yeah. Right, in that case. Try not to die. No biggie, don't step on the things. Right, that's one guy over. Um mm -hmm. Okay, now uh, we need a hmm? new route for you because otherwise it'll get boring. We could send him over to Chloe yeah. Pants, but I guess not. Spiders! Ooh, I was looking forward to spider fights. I knew they were coming. Stack for <laughs> And you, you can... You can blind? A spider. That's a lot of eyes, you know. Are you sure you can find a spider? You can knock a spider down. How can I help? Do it. Okay, these spiders are dead, I think. There's no loot to be had. Okay, this is probably going to be more spiders now. Yay, it is! Look at that one, that's a big spider. I want you to crush that spider. And I want you to poke the little spider. But I want you to poke everyone. Uh, okay, so apparently someone is fatigued. But that's cool. We're gonna have a rest soon enough. I think. I 
think we're allowed to camp here, right? There's another tunnel over there that we want to explore. And there's something to look at over there. Hmm. Alright, this is too late. So, you're huh? the guy with the fatigue, right? Yeah, he is. Alright, loot the spider. Huh, that's not very expensive. Sure. I'll take it. That's as large as chickens are stuck on the web. Okay, and a helm. Helm has come in many forms, from the humble battered cap to a fully enclosed steel great helms. Different cultures tend towards different styles of helmets, but aside the fragile with the arm is the type of helmets an individual wears often comes down to personal preference. Um it looks to me like that helmet is completely useless, but I'll take it. Oh, add some gems. Yeah. Alright, that's an exit as well, right? Okay, well... We're gonna camp here. And then we'll call it there for now. Thanks for watching, I'll see you next time.